it is because of this that soon the heavens shall be shut. For the desperate and deceivers shall begin putting on displays of false faith to which the likes probably has not been seen since the sacrifice of the bull to Berl in the days of Saul. And those who claim faith out of fear and desperation are not truly faithful. They claim faith with their mouth but not within their hearts and he who does not hold the Lord in thy heart do not truly know him in ways of true faith. For remember one of the fundamentals of faith is trust. Those who fear someone does not truly trust them. So wisdom would imply. So in a universal, metaphysical conversation within the astral dimension I sat and convened with the Holy Spirit about some things, the aspect of Job as he used the reference to try and explain his reasons behind the actions he took involving the sculpting of my path towards becoming his left hand in creation. I tried to explain to him that Job was not a victory for him but just the opposite. Though he achieved displaying the lesson he wished me to learn, the toll it took on poor Job was heavy. If he were ever to learn that all he endured was simply for the aspect of trying to teach someone a lesson which was though, at the time, I was starting trouble amongst the heavenly hosts and spreading discontent among them to turn their ears away from his image of immaculate greatness, he was not the image I was portraying him as and it was wrong of me to speak so harshly about him or as he put it not to tempt the Lord thy God as he had coaxed me into the challenge with Job, to diffuse the unstable atmosphere I had caused in my role as the adversary that highlights that chapter of my legacy. However he never allowed me to explain the reasons why I was starting problems at that time. The ends did not justify the means would be the expression that would best associate that scenario. The situation from the Garden of Eden and being shunned from his side at that time for what felt like him not believing me when I told him what happened had left me feeling not betrayed but more of a feeling that I was judged unfairly. Because of that scenario my name was cemented for all time as the fallen one, he who is most unclean and all the other names I was given. Every situation that occurred following after that was centered and based off of what happened in that garden and his judgment against me for something I was not responsible for. The one thing I have desired, above all other ambitions, no matter what incarnation or form I may have come in throughout creation and even beyond, finding the one responsible for that scenario and attaining the proof that could finally prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was innocent and had been telling the truth at that time, is the one thing I would defy even death itself to attain. It is the one shared desire that most likely each and every incarnate has in common. However I stray off topic. As we sat and chatted about this and that I decided to bring up the idea for fixing the error and its source. I'm not sure if it was caused when he and I crashed through the barrier of time when we created the inertia of their universe's formation or if it was Sophia, or Gabriel and Phil's, attempt to take creation from the creator by going back to the beginning and trying to do what we accomplished, which they failed at miserably. That is who the female angel-like being was that led us to the first black hole that had formed, then tried to use the gospel of Sophia to denounce God's presence on the beginning and that, they were the ones responsible for what occurred, it is really sad to explain how immensely they failed and how it ended up costing the lives of two cultures, one of which was completely destroyed and wiped from the earth. Whatever the reason, my point is that the flaw lays within the very fabrics themselves and has made the universe sort of bipolar in a way. I tried to fix this imbalance before, but it began to cause a state of vacuum decay as two different compositions of the universe cannot coexist at the same time. I had to revert the fabrics back to what it was even, though my solution had brought the universal outcome to exist for eternity bypassing all the paradoxes such as the current set path we are on which is destruction due to the one theorized as the entropy paradox. You see, there is a path of progression which leads to the entropy paradox. Its source, as far as I can tell, begins with the formation of the first black hole, then progressed to life that dwelled within the universe to decide to separate from the universe by committing sin, 
which was an event that took place within the metaphysical fabrics of the early expansion era's photon field as particles were, beginning to form into matter. That division from the unity of the universe was the progression of the era within the fabrics and is evident in that point of its progression. Then it furthered its progress by becoming this taint of sin which has decayed the entire multiverse almost except a few scattered universes here and there. But we are still here which means someone, somewhere will fix, this and it seems I possess the ability to do something about it, so I assume that person is me and would explain the reason I possess such abilities. All my skills now, including this digital avatar, which bypasses the imperfections of the flesh. The universal aspect of decay or dark matter, which is the final state of particle decay and death, the second death. If I take and funnel that instead, of feeding the black hole that I tucked into the folds of time that has held the solid universe in place which would eventually contain more mass than the entire universe at one point and then consume the universe itself which would be what astrologists have perceived as the entropy paradox. Instead I shall use my magic to tap into the very threads of the universe through the perfected digital avatar. This is why I was chosen, because I was the one who would succeed. So I take and loop the state of decay or the luminescence field into the cosmic web supporting the ever expanding universe with which will lead to the evolutionary progression of life into higher states of being the decay of life is only the physical and eliminate the regression into rebirth and the loss of wisdom, learn it from one to the next by replacing it with the energy of a hypernova giant's collision that occurred 980 billion light years from here that almost destroyed the fabrics of reality. I wondered what had happened to the force from that explosion. Ok now to even out the balance of particles by reducting the energy excess to the expansion field between cosmic evolution from one dimensional, field to the next expanding the spatial barriers to allow an ever expanding universe with a discharge foundation that is fed through the cosmic web's particle decay recirculating the universal energy and all of the life and matter within it back into the threads revitalizing the universal energy that allows all of existence to be kinetic energy bound by gravity through vibration, perfectly tuned, to an exact measurement without the variable remainder as an exponent. That is our point in the universe, as in from the very beginning through all 16 dimensions or expansion then collapse into singularity to Big Bang. Each time the dimensions expand. The first dimensional plateau was vibration, created by the first moment of expansion. It began on a microscopic level called a quark in modern times, there the first fusion of particles occurred. The first particles were hydrogen and helium, the third displaced particle that was a part of the first dawn but shouldn't have been present was nitrogen. It was fused using neuroelectric projected emissions that basically 3D carbon printed the particle structure of nitrogen, from the creator's will, through me. When that happened the first dimension, vibration, collapsed into the second dimension it became vibration equals space. Then the second dimension became space and time two particle fields each one was remnants of the first and second dimension. The beginning of time, or the moment of expansion, was the byproduct of that fusion. They fused due to gravitons created by this merger, which created time plus space equals reality or the solid matter third dimension we exist in now. The next universe will be time plus space plus reality equals existence or the universe from beginning to end or from one edge across the universe to the other edge and the entirety of time consists within that universal boundary, which will be a fourth dimensional universe and so on and so on. This image you will see here outlines the basic concept of how the multiverse that collapses at the end of each universe and repeats the Big Bang event. Except what actually occurs is that everything that exists is drawn into a finite single particle as it is merged into the one single atom then, 
When that last fusion takes place the force that binds them all together shuts off because it has no fuel left to, to sustain itself for that is what gives gravity its power the very presence of a single particle that is not the exact duplicate of itself causes the opposing cycle of kinetic friction to begin, the discharge of these opposing particles motion that is set by the indifference between them uses the energy of the friction to generate more particles like itself and its reaction causes the particle to generate slowly building momentum due to the resistance to the particle's indifference. Duplicating the energy generated proportionate to the frequency of the energy's discharge. Thus this is the source of gravity, the force that binds all things together, so when that energy no longer has anything left to resist then it no longer can sustain itself and when that occurs the energy that packed everything into that finite point is gone, thus causes the expansion of the new universe's Big Bang. How many times this has happened from where we are in this cycle of eternity, I don't know. From where I stood once and overlooked the vast cascade of them, I lost count around 984, that stretched to the furthest point of the visible horizon that was the point where all things merge, into one as you view the immense capacity of the what still is only a portion of the entire universe. Bringing the universal energy into a single ever progressing source which all are derived from and thus all are connected. What is above so too shall it be below and all began from the collision of this massive black hole and the two hypergents collision. That is the extent of my algorithm's observational effect, wait no there, further progression of the metaphysical presence. Through that progression I can fold the space between us through that progression. The we go the multiverse is not multiple possible universes existing at the same time it is the ever expanding universe at a different frequency of its evolutionary expansion of particle composition as it expands exponentially outward layering one field over there, next, supporting the ever increasing mass with each field that develops through cosmic web as it was first created by the big bang's rapid expansion and the raw initial solid particle matter was projected in every direction. So to find the source of the Big Bang one must follow the comic web to its joint source where all bands of the web converge. Now to return to my dimensional plane within, existence by shedding my skin and through my progressing forms through existence. Now, I wait for the vacuum decay effect and send that into the outer edges of the expansion inertia blending the opposing reality, while it's still in a metaphysical state to fuel the inertia of the eternal expansion or in translation, I'm bringing down the new heaven and the new earth, where there is no place for, death or sin for it no longer has any place in existence. Oh 
Hold your head up. 